Welcome back to another episode of the Pursuit of Profit pod. Today I'm joined with Ads. How you doing, bro? Appreciate it, man. Good, man. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you for coming down. You come all the way from Manchester, so yeah, I appreciate it a lot. Yeah, long journey. Appreciate it for being here. Thank you for bringing me on. First yeah. podcast ever. First in-person in podcast, so definitely appreciate it. Well, no, I appreciate you you coming on a lot. I'm excited for, for this conversation. For sure. Um, so for my audience, obviously they're mostly traders. Some of them will, will probably know you, but for those of them that don't, if you could just quickly introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. So my name's Ads. I've been trading for the last three years, also known as Sniper Ads on my socials. Um, I'll get into why I chose that name as well yeah. uh, in the in, in later on in this podcast. But yeah, trading for the last uh, three years alongside full-time warehouse work and as a full-time university student. So it's been a very sort of intense journey for myself in the work side of things and in the um, university life. And yeah, just basically been putting my head down for the last three years working. And now, thankfully, Alhamdulillah, been profitable in my trading journey, trading full time right now. And yeah, just just happy where I am. But I'm going to I'm looking to sort of excel in where I am right now and take it up another level, inshallah, hopefully in the next year or two. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited to see and, and hear about your, your journey because we started speaking, I think maybe like eight months ago, roughly. Yeah, around about that time. And you had maybe like 300 followers on, yeah, on Instagram. Like yeah, yeah. you were just kind of starting out, released your first mm -hmm. YouTube video, I think. Yep. Um, you got your uh, prop fan payout as well, I think yep. around that time. Um, so yeah, I'm interested to hear. So if you could just take us back you know, talk about your kind of upbringing. You grew up in Manchester, right? Or you're yeah, from yeah. Manchester. Mm -hmm. So if you could just tell us a bit about your upbringing, take us all the way to the point where you first found out about trading mm -hmm. um, and then we can just go Yeah, from there. sure. So um, I just come from like a normal working class family. Um, I was at the time before trading, just before trading, I was in college. Um, so <clears throat> I was working for, if you know Pearson Ferrier and estate agents. So I was doing work experience for um, an estate agents two days a week unpaid for six months oh. so it first starts off with just obviously the work ethic so I was doing that um, two days a week during alongside my college after I finished the two years of college I was introduced into like the usual signals group you know the marketing signals group people yeah, yeah. so um, I joined one of those um, groups and on my first ever trade um, it was on Nasdaq. I remember it was a standard lot as well I put on, on like a $200 account and I made like 60 quid and that was my day's wage, which, which was also my part-time job, which I also had as well working in like a retail store yeah. and a wholesale store. So it was really tough work over there, but I'd get paid 60 quid a day for that. So when I made 60 quid on my day off, it was like, whoa, this is something. So from that point on, that's it. I just saw that 60 quid, bro, the next day, uh, another signal came in, bro, I blew the account. But so that's when I realized at the same time though, if I can lose it all, I can make it as well. Yeah. So that's what really got me interested. And in. even just seeing that, that my day's wage in like half an hour, an hour that's what really like just switched sw switched something inside of me and that's where the journey sort of began from um prior to all this obviously i had the sort of work ethic the determination the persistence to just become an entrepreneur regardless like i knew i didn't want to work a nine to five um i knew i had to work it to to, to, to get some sort of capital but with that capital, I was thinking of things like, you know, the uh, usual Amazon FBA, Shopify, uh, social media marketing agency. So I took courses from like the likes of Ty Lopez, uh, Alex Becker, mm. all these other, you know, people in, in, the, in the industry. Um, and then, yeah, so prior to all this, I was doing things like newspaper rounds, um, 18 quid a week, cash, seven days a week, uh, waking up at like 6 a.m. So that's how, proper slave labor, newspaper rounds. Literally, yeah. <laughs> for 18 quid cash and I felt like the man that was yeah. when I was in like year 10 so I'm about 14 15 years old from then you know doing car washes for my neighbors selling cakes on the streets literally like you can ask anyone I was I was doing this from like a young age so I always had that in me to get to get to some point where I can be financially free myself um and I knew it re required some sort of um belief from myself first to then you know get it going so fast forward back again to that signals group, started learning from the signals. And I realized, and it's actually my dad and my brother at the time, who I also got in on this as well. My little brother, who was about 14 or 13 at the time, he was trading penny stocks. So I didn't know about it much. I was into that Amazon FBA, like I said, the Shopify and things like that. And he was there like waking up, I think wherever the market opened, the stock exchange open was. Uh, maybe like 2.30 p.m. or something. Yeah. And he'd be on his laptop making like 50 pence, <laughs> right? Because he'd be trading with like small money, but he'd still be into it. Yeah. Now, yeah, from then, that's when he, I told him, look, I made 60 quid in a day. And then from that point on, that's it. We just started the journey of trying to learn all this ourselves, 
my dad told me that, oh, you know, there's things like double tops in the market, double bottoms. And I was like, what? There's actually patterns that you can actually use yeah, yeah. to actually forecast what's gonna happen. So that's when I really just, I just almost dropped everything and that was the f uh, sole focus. So how my journey really began in the actual trading side of things, signals group first with the marketing side. And then, you know how you just normally join the Telegram groups, Telegram group chats. Um, I just joined some random one there. I don't know if you know a guy called Tyler Nair on, Insta on YouTube. He's a trader from the US and he's one of the first um, YouTubers that I watched. And he was talking about, you know, those little flips from 10 to 100, um, doing that 10 times and things like that. So just joined his socials, joined a few groups. And in those groups, you know, you always had to see like, you know, the gold master 247 dropping like 300 lots on gold and yeah. he's making like, you know, a quarter million in like a minute. And you're thinking, what, is this real or not? You don't know. You, you, as, a, as a beginner, you always think it's real. Hmm. So, you know, you're following these random people, you're asking them for questions and at one point then I just came across some random, another person, another, another trader. And this happened to be my first ever mentor in the game. And um, his name was actually, um, he, get, he he went by two names, uh, John, John Wick and Riddick or something like that. So he's from South Africa and he actually was posting real charts with his analysis and the actual trade there. When, when was this by the way, what year? This was, it's really hard to remember because it was like, so I'd say around about 2021, yeah, 2021 and just like August 2020 or just the start of 2021. Around that time, I believe, I think, uh, 2020, let's call it. Yeah, around yeah. COVID time, that was it, COVID. Okay. So around that time, I just started messaging him. And surprisingly, this guy was giving me like tons of information, like for free, like paragraphs and telling me market structure this, market structure that. Eventually, obviously, he had a little like mentorship, $250, paid it. And that's it, I started learning with him. It's a funny story, this one. So 10 weeks of intensive, like just um, 10 lessons or 10 weeks of just one-on-one -on -one sessions with him. And the main thing he was going over was market structure, market structure, market structure, market structure. And that's the foundations of my trading to this day. And I never will like forget that. So key levels, market structure is what he was preaching. And from his teachings, um, what I understood after that was this is the way. So I ended up making like little 10 quid accounts, 50 quid accounts, flipping them, um, I think at the time I was, he also put me onto synthetic indices. Have you heard about that? Yeah. Yeah. So synthetic indices was my, was my bread and butter. And I think anyone who's watching this right now, if you struggle with market structure or trends or direction and just, just trading in general, I feel like synthetic indices really is like a hidden gem. I don't, I've not heard anybody talk about it, like apart from my own mentor at the time. Mm. Um, and the way this moves is like zigzags, honestly, it's like very, very clean. Um, and that really solidified my market structure in this. In that, in like literally my first um, couple of months of doing that, I was like flipping, I think I looked at my story the other day on my highlights. Um, it was like 20, 20 quid to 350 quid in like less than a week. And this is during my full-time job, which I'll get into it as well in yeah. a bit. But these were like flips that were like unheard of for me because prior to this, like I said, before I met this mentor, I know I'm going a bit all over the place, but it's just kind of coming. Yeah, yeah no, it's good. That's, that's it comes with, yeah. But before this mentor, I was in that same trading group that, like I said, like trading chats and things like that. There'd be one guy who would, you know, promote his strategy. We'd all follow him. And at one point, his strategy was just draw, draw a box around the Asian range. <laughs> and whichever way it breaks out, you just, you enter, no stop loss. No stop loss whatsoever, you just enter. And the times it would work, it'd work. I'd wake up in the middle of, in the, of, of the, well, the morning, uh, seven o'clock ish, just before, London breakout and I just enter a trade, make 30 quid, go back to sleep and I felt like that's it. I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> then two days later, I'd blow the whole account because no stop loss. Yeah. So it was just a weird, weird thing that I was working with and I really felt like that was the holy grail. And that's what I feel like a lot of these beginners, if they don't have the right, like me, I didn't have the right guidance at the time or just kind of following whatever looked good, then you can get burnt really badly. So I was really just blowing accounts prior to all this. 200 quid account blown, 400 quid account blown. Then it got to a point where I genuinely had I think it was minus 50 pounds in my bank account. And then that's when I uh, heard about a warehouse job, which I've mentioned in one of my first Instagram reels. Um, and this was a 12 hour shift job, uh, four, five, six days a week. I, remember, I worked six days a week at one point. So 12 hour shifts and that was what I was using to basically give me my sort of money back really. And this is also whilst I was in university. So during, so all this is going on now. So I'm in my first year of university, I'm working 12 hour shifts in a warehouse and as a cleaner. Um, sweeping floors, um, you know, doing the bins and all that for 12 hours a day is really, really tough work. And all along, and after I'd finished those shifts, I was still going back home, back testing, forward testing and doing those sessions with my mentor. So 
that's one part I feel like in this industry, a lot of traders, well, people that want to become traders, they're just not doing that part. They, they, even me, I was looking at my charts whilst I was on lunch breaks, you know, whenever I could, I would just try and look for a, look for a move, look for something that, because at the end of the day, this is what you want to help you escape from this matrix or this, from this um, sort of prison cell, if you want to call it, right? Mm. So people aren't, a lot of, a lot of people, I still get DMs about it. Like people are telling me, I want to, how can I do this alongside my day job? Like you have to find a way. There's always a way. Now I know you have to respect, you know, company's time and things like that. But, you know, lunch breaks, break times, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be on it. After my work would finish, I'd still find time to go and back test, go and forward test. And one thing as well that I always talk about is forward testing um, and forecasting, because that will is that's what will actually give you the confidence in your strategy. So, you know, I would go home, maybe look at the four hour time frame, the one hour time frame, make like a forecast, give it a day or two. Next thing you know, it's actually hitting my levels and it's going from then. So it's giving me some sort of hope. So if you're not doing the forward testing, you'll always be stuck in back test mode and you'll always be just dwelling on the past. And from there, you can't really expect any growth. So yeah, just to put into perspective again, I was just doing all that. So warehouse job full time. Um, I did that for like, I think nine months alongside all that. I was doing the mentorship, uh, mentorship with my mentor. Even at the time I was putting my uh, my uh, co-workers on it as well. You know, they were on to it. They were like, how do you get into this trading? So I was trying to tell them, look, look, my trade worked. And I said, them, look, if I held this trade, because I said, well, line of money, <laughs> if I held this trade, I would have made a thousand dollars like like right now. And I'd shown them, you know, my demo profits because I was trading demo at the time as well. And yeah, so full-time warehouse, full-time university student. And don't forget my first year in university was that 2020 period as well, 2021. Mm -hmm. So in university, we had to like, it was all online. And if we would, if we ever did go in, everyone would be sat, not in like a theatre sort of environment. It's more like an exam hall. Got so you, you couldn't even like really socialise with the people around you. It was very, very sort of just um, separated and just very, very like... Um, everyone was a solo everyone's on their own mission and just not even talk everyone with their masks on as well yeah that's another big thing everyone just wearing those masks so yeah it was very difficult and i i and actually like i've actually just graduated as well now so congrats yeah thanks man um three years um finishing in uni and i genuinely honest with you i went in probably about 10 times really yeah i went into university physically probably about 10 times in the whole three years um what did you study business and management okay. with it yeah because that's what i was into just back then you yeah, just a little course but yeah so back to that um part first year university full-time student full-time worker doing 12 hours what year was that as well is that 2020 2020 2021 okay around about that time yeah, yeah. and um that's it and then, and then also trying to become a full-time trader so everything was just basically work work for money and work for trading yeah pretty much yeah I think you've hit a really good point on the head. I get so many people say like, how do you find the time? Like I work full time, how can I learn to trade? But they get home and they watch Netflix for four hours. Exactly. And I was the same, I actually started as an estate agent, right? right? And I did that for, you know, quite a few years. And as you know, that the hours are very long. I would start work at eight, finish at seven, mm -hmm. and then it would be like an hour drive home and I'd still go and back test for four hours and still study for four hours and stay up till, yeah, till yeah. silly o'clock yeah, until yeah, it would click, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. But people now, like a lot of beginners now, it's like they want to do the job, but then they need to reward themselves by watching Netflix yeah, yeah, exactly. for a few hours. They're like, I have no time yeah. to chill, but it's not meant to be easy. <laughs> Literally, yeah. They want this this journey, this um, learning part to be a comfortable part. Yeah. But you have to understand that growth is never, ever going to be comfortable. Like, you know, you get growing pains when you're younger physically. It hurts, but you end up growing, right? And um, so anything that requires growth will require you to be somewhat uncomfortable. And that's the part that you have to just push through. Because now look, like, I don't have to be trading right now. Yeah. The only thing I did on the way on, on the way here, just sent out a signal. We hit TP4, one to four. That's it. And that's me done for the day for the signals at least. Um, when it comes to my academy for the for the, for the the gold, I'll just put one analysis in there and I have a window now. Like the way, honestly, the way I, prior to all this, I would be I would be like on the charts from Lond Asian Open, like Asian, sorry, uh, like Frankfurt Open. So just before London. I'd be on it from there looking for a certain setup. It'd go over to like London. I'd still be looking at the market. Then it's not, I, I'm, 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 I'm seeing something, but then I'm scared to pull the trigger. And then it's now New York session and I'm still in the market. Then it's like 4 p.m., 5 p.m. And that's like, you know, near enough London close and I'm still looking at the market. So yeah. it, it's not supposed to be like that. It really isn't. But initially you have to start off with understanding the whole market cycle, the whole, 
the way the market moves and that will require time baby pips you know just understanding what a bullish market environment is what a bearish environment all these simple basics that requires time and that's more like the academic side of things you know just really learning the theoretical side and just you know noting things down pen and paper that will require time and that's nothing bad but when it comes to your actual trading time that's another thing i'll get into in a bit but when you have that specific window bro your life becomes so stress-free and i i recently wrote a tweet out the other day it got it kind of well but i was literally just saying one pair one session um basically means less stress there's less variables less emotions and in the end it require it means more profits yeah so altogether if you just if i just look back in those like 2020 2021 period of time just i was all out grinding for the capital which i could invest into my accounts to the ftmo accounts for example because i did come across prop firms later on in my journey then um whilst i was working at the warehouse and then yeah just working full-time as a warehouse worker full-time university student studying and then also doing my trading as well yeah absolutely i think a lot of beginners especially they think the more trades they take or the more time they spend in front of the charts the more money they're going to make mm -hmm. but actually like you say the more you can kind of streamline that process it's going to be less stressful and the trades you take are actually just going to be higher quality yep. you're going to make more money yep. there's not a correlation between more trades taken and more profit if anything the more trades you take the more risk you're taking on the exactly. more time you're spending in the market the more you're going to lose right you actually want to wait for those high quality setups that meet your trading plan exactly. but most beginners they just want that dopamine hit that thrill of being in the market yeah, yeah. right and like you say if you're a day trader trading all sessions it's very hard to manage risk right because you could be presented with maybe four or five trading opportunities in the day and if you're risking one percent of your account you could lose five percent in the day you know exactly. everyone's got different opinions on it but for me i'm quite risk averse mm -hmm. um i'm a bit of a vanilla trader so mm -hmm. for me stuff like that it uh <laughs> it scares me yes. um okay cool so 2021 you're, you're grafting now you know you're at the warehouse you're studying uni all your free time i'm guessing is is going into trading mm -hmm. um when, when did it start to click what was the kind of like there probably wasn't one moment but what was the point where you said okay i can actually see myself doing this you know i yeah, can actually question. make so, money from this yeah, yeah perfect so when i started doing those those four uh, forecasts after my um shift had ended and then i'd come back the next day and jump back on the computer and see it hit my levels perfectly or not even perfect, just hit that area and start moving from there that's when i started to say okay this strategy works and i'll just let you know that strategy was very simple just to at the time it was a simple you know break of structure retracement and this is to like a, any Fibonacci level like mainly the 618 for example that's it. I just enter there put my stop loss right below the low and it'd work the risk to reward wasn't amazing it was like 1 to 1.5 or at, you know on good average it'd be like a 1 to 2 but the win rate was also very very good and that's another thing that you know really kept me going because I, I kept on winning and I was doing well with the wins so when I started um, seeing th that happening after my work shift had ended and then I started putting on demo trades. And then I started seeing profits on demo trades. What I did actually on the demo trades was actually make a hundred grand, a hundred K accounts on like Traders Way or something, um, the demo account, and see if I could actually grow it to uh, 110 K, so gain 10%. And around this time, my um, friends told me about prop firms, this thing about FTMO, oh, you can actually like get an application, you know, pay you like $500 or something, or at the time for a 10 K account, it was like $50, let's say, or something. And then you get access to 10k with the capital so that was like whoa okay that really i was like that's it doesn't even make sense how how can you do that so when i found out about that and i found out what the requirements were what the requirements were i didn't just go and buy a channel straight away i didn't even do a free trial straight away i just went on a demo straight away first and then i started to trade during work times so if i found i know that i didn't have a specific window i didn't have a specific time strategy i just had a technical strategy so with that um yeah just during my breaks and lunch times i would just place trades and then maybe half an hour, a few hours down the line at work, I'd see the profit, see it take profit, I'd screenshot it. And um, yeah, I would just keep doing that. And that's where the belief started coming. And then eventually, you know, when my contract had ended uh, at the workplace, uh, at the warehouse, after doing that for literally nine months, 12 hour shifts, five, six days a week, um, solely doing that and doing paper trading, demo trading. And then I did a free trial as well in the end, closer to the end of my um, time there. I actually passed um, a free trial account, so that gave me some sort of belief as well. Then I went on to the as soon as as soon as my work had finished, uh, my um, my my job at the warehouse, I went and opened a 10k FTMO challenge, and I got to 9.4% gain, and I was like in three days. So I was doing really really well with that strategy. 
and I was um, going down to my dad like, look, I made 9.4%. I'm, I'm like 0.6 away from passing it. Bro, I went, I thought, and this is when I was just, this is why I say like, look is a little bit in, involved, but at the same time, I was following my strategy. But I hadn't really experienced any crazy losses with this strategy before. If I experienced a loss, I would just I would just kind of over leverage on the next trade and it just, just work out for me. So it was working then, but then what I did was when I realized I got only 0.6% left to gain, I just went on GJ, which is a pair I never traded. I used to trade GU only. And I went on GJ and I used to class that as a pair that wicked up and down a lot. So I pretty much just almost gambled on that one. I was like, okay, it's going up, so I'm gonna put sell in there and it just carries on going up. So I lost the money and then I ended up blowing the account that same day. So up 9.4% on an FTMO account and I blow it the same day. Yeah. And I was like, what? Then I, but, but at the same time, I looked on the bright side. I was like, look, if I can make 9.4% or whatever, 9% gain in three days, I can do 10%. Next thing you know, 10, uh, next attempt I tried, passed it. And that's when my journey really began. And funnily enough, when I actually got the funded account, and this is something a lot of other traders will experience when it comes to you getting your funded account. And I remember the CEO of uh, the funded trader, Angelo, he said the same thing. He says that a lot of traders in the challenge phase one and phase two, they will be, um, let's say, following a strategy, following a certain plan very well. Let's say they're just trading GU like I was, right? Trading retracements and things like that, right? For the next, for phase one and phase two. When they get the funded account, they're scalping gold now. And that's literally what I started doing. I I got my funded account and then I started doing breakouts and, you know, breakout trading on GU, which is something I never done before. And this is when I started, you know, learning about, I, 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 I didn't have a job at this point, remember, because I just finished my work. And now I kind of just had all that money saved. I probably had about five or six months worth of expenses sort of saved up. And this is the sort of, you know, two methods that I'd say you can go about when it comes into, when it comes to full-time trading. You either have a set amount set aside for, let's say, six months of expenses, or, you know, you do what, or, or you just either work and you do what I'm doing right now, which is trading, um, simultaneously but I found it easier if I could just save up six months worth of expenses and then go in all in after that so then I started looking at so when I first got the funded account now the way I looked at it was I've now got more time to trade meaning that's the see what I mean that yeah. I was thinking of it like I was only trading for like a couple of hours in the day or a few minutes even in the day at the workplace and I was making this much imagine now if I have 12 hours to trade yeah or, you know uh, the whole two sessions imagine back how much to what we just said right you thought oh, I've got more time I can take more trades exactly. I'm going to make more money yeah exactly so when I saw it that way I was thinking great now what can I do that's when I came across these you know these live streamers on YouTube who are doing these like um breakout trading and the, the scalping. So when they're sort of, you know, showcasing their, their results, you kind of just get, it's, it really appeals to you and you're seeing them make real money. So I was just watching them. I was like, okay, I could maybe try that out. And that's it. I just started going down that route and it was just, I think I ended up blowing my 10K account within like the first couple of weeks. But then I realized this wasn't the right way to go about it. However, what I did do was also study this breakout trading because I saw profitability in it. And that's where my signals, you know, originally come from. Because I know you've been like seeing them for the last, it's almost been exactly a year now. Mm. And I've just been doing that because I now have a skill set in breakout trading. So for those like, this is now at this point, it was like, I think it was actually August 2021 at this point. So if, imagine that everything I was talking about with the work just rewind that about a year. That's how long it was for. Mm -hmm. Year and a half, I'd say, me working with my own money. So then for the remainder year and a half, so for the last year and a half from now, um, to make it that full three years, I've just been trading with prop firms. And when it comes to personal accounts, I just like to do little flips. But with that prop firm, then after I, after I failed that funded account, that's it. Then I just started learning about breakout trading and I learned about um, my own strategy and refined that a little bit better. And that's when I started going for that 100K because um, I had the money for it and I had the strategy and I saw the you know the results. Went for the first 100K account. With that, I made an 8% payout. So I got like 8K on that um, with that withdrawal. Then I bought another 100K account with that. So I had 200K in my Forex funds. And then within that same month of obviously me getting it, uh, I made again 5 6% on the account, which resulted in me getting around an 11K payout. So if you just, if I look back at it in my first three months of trading properly now with prop firms as a trader that's now refined his strategy, got his trading rules correct. Because again, like I said, I learned the hard way. I, I blew my funded account the moment I got it. I saw it as the more time I have, the more I can trade, which was the wrong way of going about it. So when I understood that and you have to have windows and times to trade, this is when I started, you know, refining my times and my trading plan. And very simply just um, went ahead and made that what was it altogether about altogether within with a couple more withdrawals within within the first three months i made about 20k 
So I've just made my whole pretty much year's wage within about two or three months. Mm. It gave me so much breathing room, so much like comfort. Now that from that point on, I just became just full on like every day was just back. Not, not I couldn't, I didn't even think about another job from that point onwards. And I know people think like, you know, some people might think that was, that's not enough to, you know, set them to, you know, keep them from working a job or anything like that. But with the amount of, not just time I put in, because that's another thing people mistake, you know, putting time into something like I can say I traded for the last three years, but realistically, you know, I might have actually traded for like um, a couple of hours, if that every two weeks, you know what I mean? But I was genuinely every single day, like I'm not joking, every single day for three years. I don't think there's been one day where I've not looked at the chart mm. for the last three years. And that doesn't mean I place a trade every single day. I just mean looking at the chart intensively, trying to work, figure out ways I can improve myself. So that's why I said, I had so much belief in myself that I'm not going to work another job and I'm going to go full time into this. So yeah, just prop firms, my Forex funds, that's what really leveraged it, it really you know, boosted my um, my level up from from here to up here. And it was really that, that really gave me that leeway. And then that's really when I started to, it came across, you know, Alamba mm -hmm. came across his page. Uh, I was following a lot of gurus at the time, you know, Forex mentors, but when I came across Raul and his teachings, his was just very simple. It aligned similar to my strategy and I resonated with it quite a, lot, quite a bit. And yeah, just that in general was a big stepping stone for myself because with the education he provided and the constant webinars and the uh, ongoing help, it really gave me like, um, it really gave me that support and that belief in myself that, you know, I've got someone that I can always go back to. And for some reason, I've just forgotten the main thing. Remember that mentor that I was talking to you about, the original one? The South African one. Yeah, South African yeah. one, the guy who showed me the whole market structure. He literally helped me get my first 10K account. So with him, I gave, um, he, I wanted to open a synthetic indices account and I gave him $100 to open it because I think he can only open it up in Africa and Asia. So I gave him $100 to open up and this is during that time at the warehouse again. Um, and it was coming close to my wife's birthday at the time. And what I'd done was I, I gave, I, he gave me that $100. I flipped it to $600 um within this within the week and i was like great this is actually like real money i'm i'm gonna withdraw this now and you know buy something with this so it's like great and um bro it came around to you know let me let me withdraw and can i can i get a withdrawal and you know can you can send the withdrawal over no reply thinking what and then his other little uh mental no, edgy educator at the time he told us that he's passed away i'm like what I actually believed it because this guy was genuinely so polite to me. Like he was genuinely polite, like everything. He'd give me paragraphs of information, honest, down to earth guy. This guy has gone ahead and apparently passed away in a car crash or whatever. So they send the, the picture to the group and we're like, nah, no way. So RIP's in the chat. And then um, I look, I zoom in the picture and I see a tow truck there, right? And I see the name of the tow truck and I just Google that out, Google that news article that comes up of, a car crash from like two years, three years ago. Oh my God. I'm like, God. what? So this he mentor- was death. Yeah, yeah, over what, <laughs> like $500? So and this guy was making that type of bread, like he was making that type of money, like every other day, I promise to you. So I really didn't understand it. It was, it was the way- So he scammed you for $100? Well, yeah, because but I made also, yeah, yeah, because it was in his name, the, the account. So I, I gave him the $100, I flipped it, I made extra like $500. So obviously he's withdrawn the whole $600 yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And this kind of got off on me. And this guy was my mentor. Like he was like the one person I always had to fall back on. Yeah. So it was just like the weirdest thing. Like it messed me up. I was like, what? It didn't make sense. To yeah, me. yeah. So that was like a really crazy, like sort of um, experience that I had. But then I just had to like firm it just that, okay, that's it. It happened. I just got to now buy some gifts for like my own money now, I guess, <laughs> with that work money. But it, 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 it was what it is. So that is so crazy. Imagine faking your death for Literally, $600. Nah, and this guy was making that type of bread. So this is what I was talking about. Like I was telling my brother at the time, like, huh? Like, this doesn't make sense. So that happened. And he's not on socials anymore? Uh, nah, nah. Wow. He deleted that... his account. He kicked me out. Oh, and that's the thing. When I exposed it, he just he kicked me out of the group. So he came back from the dead. Came back <laughs> <laughs> he came up from the dead, kicked me out of the crew, and then that's it. He just dipped on everyone. But nah, one oh. good thing that I did did do though was um, he he did record the webinars, so I always have them to go back on. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, it is what it is. But weirdest story. But then that's it. Then I found obviously did my prop firms, my forex funds, two hundred k, and then um, came across Raul. When was this? When when did you come across Raul? Came across Raul March twenty twenty one, just after I had that ten k payout. Okay. 
March 2021. Okay. March, yeah, March 2021. No, no, it's 2022. 2022. 2022. Yeah, okay. so literally one year ago. Yeah. So I've been in his like mentorship DTI group for the last two for the last year, and yeah, just been tuning in with him. Um, definitely give props to him. A lot of credit. Like he, the the man can trade. Like he can trade. The one of the most transparent guys I've seen in the industry, um, along with a lot of others. But with him, his technical analysis, the way he executes, and then obviously shows it you publicly on his YouTube withdrawal. You know. It's all legit and the way he provides the education to us in the DTI was given us a good foundation of just general support resistance, um, things like that. And a very simple way about going about, you know, trading and then the webinars and things like that, that really helped me as well. So from that point on, um, I was just really expanding my portfolio with prop firms. So I was just sticking within my Forex funds, um, you know, going in and out with other prop firms as well. And now I'm funded like around 500k. I've got another 500k in challenges. So basically, I'm trying to get to about a million in funding by the end of this year. Yep. So yeah, that's what I'm working with right now. And from that time where I joined DTI, I've been getting consistent payouts um, with every other prop firm, you know, for the last for the last year really. So that's what gives me the confidence: the fact that I can, I know that I can just make, you know, do even one trade from one prop firm. That that'll pay, that'll pay like. On, at the at the worst, it'll pay like the wage I was getting from my warehouse job, and that's just one prop firm with one trade. And I've got like three, four other accounts, so it really does give you that confidence to just go in it full, uh, um, fully. And with that transparency that I've given to my audience as well, that's what I decided to do as well. Whilst I was doing all those 10k accounts, which just document my whole journey, so people could see transparently um, my results. And the main thing was, um, if you look back at right on my uh, on my Instagram highlights, um, you'll see that my highlights begin from trades one which was like i've got basically all together now around 600 600 bits of media of different trades so they're just full you know one uh one highlight is only like 100 parts so i've just been documenting everything that i've been doing to this day just so people can see you know from the start and how i'm trading right now and the profits you can see the profits going from like um four pounds uh 14 pounds 13 pounds and 20 pounds to like thousands right now mm. and that's what you know the real transparency is there for um but yeah that's pretty much it with the with the mental side of things dti raul um and then obviously i came across um it was it was i, I think for the last three months i was just in the in the um funded you know just in really in that funded bubble and i came across i don't know if you've heard of him paladin uh yeah i think so i've heard his heard his name yeah, he's like yeah. the the young guy right he's yeah, quite yeah. Young. yeah 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 so he was he's been funded with uh prop firms for quite a while now and he's hit like you know a good amount of about quarter million in withdrawals mm -hmm. so when i found out about him and i have to say you know big shout out to him because he's really helped me in my funding journey as well um with psychology a lot of it was psychology mainly psychology because obviously i have my own technical analysis and my strategy his strategy is very nice as well and the way he's teaching it and going about it but especially with psychology i obviously with raul he's a very you know very big very famous he's got thousands in his group whereas with paladin very down-to-earth guy very transparent very very good sort of um friend to have a trading sort of partner um to have and he really emphasizes his um the, the science behind a one to two risk to reward and just the general way about keeping funded accounts because i've blown funded accounts i've blown challenges but you know, as I've started to progress, I've kept him more and more, but I've had to learn with really tough experience. But some of the things that he said have really resonated with me and I've really, you know, liked the way he's gone about talking about certain things. So when it comes to psychology, um, definitely he's played a big role in my trading and yeah, just give a lot of props to him. And another person I would say was Claudio. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of him as well. Claudio was another sort of successful student from Raul um, and he was really helping me as well with psychology because I just jumped on a little call with him. We chopped it up a little bit and we both pretty much have like this, almost exactly the same strategy and the way we go about marking the charts, technical analysis and all that. But as I've gone a lot, as I've gone on in my trading journey, I've never really had somebody to really, you know, talk about my psychology with uh, in terms of why am I feeling like this? When this happens, do you feel it as well? And when you find out that someone else has also gone through the same stuff as you, it really gives you that bit of like 
confidence that you know you're you're, you're on the right path at least mm. because these people are making it these people are on that big level now and you know they've gone through the exact same stuff that you've gone through so it's only a good sign so the way i saw so when i chopped it up with um claudio it, he really you know emphasized how treating trading like a business is like a number one priority so when he emphasized that to me that's really when i switched my style up and this is probably around similar time when i started talking to you about eight months ago um nine months ago and that's when i really started making my routine very strict um window for a certain trading period and that was really it so a mixture of paladin and claudio really definitely helped me with the psychology side of things yeah we'll, we'll touch on that in a bit as well going, going a bit more depth on on psychology um so from Raul, because obviously you had the South African mentor, then you had, you know, Raul. Mm -hmm. How do you say your trading changed when you started learning, when you first joined DTI and you started learning from from Raul? What were the kind of main changes? Yeah, definitely. So with, with Raul, it was definitely more of a simplistic approach, um, more of like an if and then sort of um, perspective. And that's what really helped me because prior to that, I was just looking for wherever my setup would appear. So if a breakup structure happens here, I'm in on the next one. No, it's not about the what it's about the where so with his style as well obviously uh, and just the general style of support resistance there's a few more confirmations that go into it when you're taking an entry for example so obviously there was that side of things but that whole idea of it's about the what um sorry it's about the where not the what because you can see a breakup structure anywhere or you can see maybe an engulfing candle anywhere that doesn't mean you just take that trade as of right now i just take trades specifically from my key levels and people that follow me on my socials, um, mainly on my Instagram and Twitter and things like that. When when I'm catching these trades, it's really from a specific point that's had history of it repeating itself to have a reaction time and time again. So I'm really just simplifying that down. And a lot of people, you know, people will say S, um, retail, trade, retail trading doesn't work, support resistance doesn't work. Bro, it's really been the game changer for me. The way I've dabbled in SMC, I've been SMC trade, I've tried those two pip stop losses out they don't work like mm. for me at least um and i know a lot of other people out there that are trying to get into trading they're going to feel a little bit I, I have nothing bad to say about smc but the thing is with trading strategies i just feel like um it's to do with your personality so my personality is i really want to just sort of set and forget and just okay it's come to my area here's my entry confirmation enter stop loss somewhere safe somewhere reasonable somewhere sensible so I'm not really trying to force a risk to reward that's really crazy, like a one to seven, one to 12. I know for some people it works because they have a very rule-based system. Mine is a little bit more discretion involved and really just sort of intuition because I've seen it work time and time again, back testing it, forward testing it. When you feel relaxed and when you're comfortable with taking your trades, you trade the best. When you're worrying and you're, you know, you're shaking when a two pip stop loss is about to get hit and it's like, you know putting you on edge you're not going to be trading the best you're going to be emotional yeah. so with that being in mind i just feel like some people need to just try out um the this this support resistance type of method retail method if you want to call it because it really gives you that peace of mind it really gives you that comfort and that ability to really trade comfortably because if you can do that then that's a massive variable in the game which is trading with emotion pretty much nullified and that's it from that point on now you can start focusing on the actual uh, technical side of things if that yeah. makes sense. I completely agree with that I think you know the shiny new object syndrome or shiny new object of SMC I think the way it's marketed is, is really good mm -hmm. and a lot of beginner traders because it's called smart money concepts and they kind of look down on retail retail traders yeah. even though we're all retail um, they get drawn to it right but like you say it's it's about finding a strategy that works for you mm -hmm. because SMC they might hit a 1 to 20, but they've lost their last 15 trades, right? So have you actually got the psychology or uh, can you deal with the psychological warfare of losing 15 trades in a row and still exactly. executing on the next yeah, trade? Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do that. Yeah, like for, that I mean, most me, people can't, right? Yeah, I, I don't want to be in the market losing. Yeah. I, I want to be there winning. So the one thing that appealed to me was the win rate of, you know, this sort of system that I'm using right now. Right now, I'd say my win rate's around 60, 70% and the average risk to reward is around a 1 to 2, yeah. right? And that's like, that's decent for me. And if on a good day, you know, with me now like um filtering down my pairs to just one pair in one session bro the results have been like incredible like yeah. the way i've started to hit the win rate i genuinely it's increased like 80 and i, I i'll pull up like you know my uh journal and things like that and my last track record because i've just started a challenge another challenge with another firm and within three days all wins no sorry uh three days um up five six percent and i just me taking one trade a day uh, one trade uh, of those three days uh, a day um 
in that specific window following my system and when you take that loss now with the system it just really you, you feel so comfortable because you yeah. almost know not for a fact i'm never gonna say for a fact but you have so much more confidence that okay you understand the wrong side of the market so i never say like i was wrong for this i was this was just wrong like you know you don't i don't put myself down for a loss and that's what i feel like a lot of traders will do um especially with the smc style traders because the moment let's say the trade hits a stop loss um it's because maybe this order block didn't work and they didn't see that, that this order block did work and then they'll go to that order block, order block and it'll still stop loss that one out so then they'll really start to question the whole system and their ability to actually read the market when in my opinion i feel like when you know when you learn a certain strategy um you're not to you're not to blame as much when when it just goes wrong because there's market randomness because you know i can have an a plus setup a plus a star star setup and still you know all the signs to, to for it to go in my favor and it can still hit stop loss that doesn't mean now i'm going to go back to my strategy and i'm going to start to say okay support resistance doesn't work throw that in the bin let me try trend lines let me just try indicators or something let me try smc it, it just means that's the one occasion where it didn't work yeah your ability to understand you should be confident enough in your ability to understand how you know the how to read the market, how to read, how to apply your technical analysis. I don't. I feel like you know a lot of the times, people that analyze the markets, you know, they call it analysis paralysis, for a reason because you're just so much in it to a point where you're not. You end up becoming fearful of actually placing a trade. Yeah. And with my with the system that I'm trading and the way I'm going about trading right now, there's no fear. It's just pure execution. Just you know, you don't have to think about it. And that's how I think it should be. Um, like Mark Douglas says, you know, you can only judge your system over a series of trades. So if you were to, you know, flip a coin either 10 times or 100 times, you don't know how many times, you, know, you don't know which um, flip is going to land on heads or tails, but you know, let's just say your, prob your edge is going to be a one to two and that's tails, right? And you know, your average win rate is 70%. You know that after those 100 flips, for example, 70% of them are going to be in your favor. You don't know if trade number 34 or, seven, or or 62 are going to be a win or a loss, but you know, eventually, if you follow your system and you follow your plan, at the end of those 100 trades, 70 of them should be winners, if that makes sense. Yeah. So that's the kind of ideology that I have nowadays with my system. Um, and really just solidifying that um, has really just taken my trading to another level, really. Yeah, I completely agree with everything you said. Everything you just said is very much in line with my kind of thinking and my, my approach to the market. Right. And that's a big thing I see a lot of beginner traders doing is they overanalyze one specific trade and they think because they lost, they've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it's not the case, right? Just if you flip a coin and you know 70% of the time it's gonna be heads, 30% it's gonna be tails. When it is tails, it doesn't mean you did anything wrong. You didn't flip the coin wrong, exactly. right? It's just part of the game. Exactly. Um, and yeah, trading is 100% execution. You know, that's why personally, I'm not a fan of the low win rate, high risk reward mm -hmm. systems. Um, but that being said, no shots fired at SMC traders. I know some great SMC traders, yeah, right? Same. I just think, um, I don't agree with the narrative of, you know, this is how the banks trade yeah, or yeah. that kind of, you know, one to 20 risk reward on yeah. every trade. Uh, I, I don't agree with, but yeah, that point that you just said about, um, you know, not overanalyzing one trade and actually looking, actually looking at your trades over the course of 50 or hundred trades mm -hmm. um, is, is spot on. Cool. So in terms of low points of the journey, was there any point at which you thought about quitting? Never. Never. never you knew? Never. never, ever. Like, I, if I blew an account, it's that same ideology that I went through before, where if I lost that amount, I know I could, it was there for me to make back. All I had to be was on the other side of the market. Yeah. So I never, yeah, I mean, I never, ever thought about giving up. Like, low points? Yeah, definitely. I had definitely quite a lot of low points in terms of like, you know, when you blow that account, that, that feeling in your stomach where like you, you just you just see the you just see the balance go to zero. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a weird feeling. I, I definitely agree. Uh, blowing accounts. And, well, yeah, I definitely would say one thing when when I was blowing challenges, I mean, like funding challenges, because that's what really took my trading to another level um, was trading with prop firms, but blowing challenges time and time and time again. It does definitely affect your confidence. But yeah, I, w I was never, never ever thought about quitting, but I did always question like, is my strategy correct? And that's the thing I was talking about before, where you go down that rabbit hole of, is your strategy correct? And that's when you start to go from this strategy to that strategy. Yeah. You join this signals group, you join that signals group, and then n they're even changing their strategy. You know, they're giving their different analysis for different pairs and things like that. So, you know, when it, when it comes to just understanding um, my low points, I would definitely say when those challenges start, you know, you start fit, breaching, breaching, when you get that email, breach challenge, breach challenge, it just does, it definitely does affect you. No. Um, never did I think about giving up, but uh, yeah, when, when I was in that sort of phase where I was blowing challenges, yeah, it was definitely like a confidence uh, killer. 
but I had I, I knew I knew for a fact look if I was to just pass the challenge get funded and get a payout or consistently find a strategy I know my life's going to change because the in general I always say this to everyone even people that are trying to get into trading your family and friends like the risk to reward in trading is crazy like we're going like now okay I just finished university for the sake of finishing it because I know I'm not I don't really I don't want to go down that route but I did it because I was in the second you know like I said I started off in my first year with the with the South African mentor and then second year was just you know warming into everything and then by the third year pretty much I'd hit my payouts and things like that so it's just kind of like that so with the risk to reward in trading in general compared to let's say the nine to five job you're putting in let's just say for a 100k account which I believe is like should be like the minimum if you're going to actually try and make an impact on your trading you know uh, if you want to make a good income from your trading I do know a lot of people with 50k accounts you know doing well as well but I feel like the minimum should be like 100k look you put 500 quid down for um you know a 100k account you pass that you know you start to get consistent payouts five percent you know a month it's not unheard of let's just say that's unrealistic let's just say three percent in a whole month that's 3k right after profit split 2k now you're making the same amount as you know a lot of other professionals um professional workers right who are graduates so and then you have the upside of you know you could make as you can make however percent however many percent you want um and you know 10%, 10, 10K, and that's a one single 100K account. Now imagine you have a million dollars in funding, right? Imagine you have $2 million in funding. See how your life can change. Whereas when you're, when you're, with, um, when you're in university or you're in the education system, you're studying for, you know, over 10 years, I'd say, like, you know, if you include like the high school, college, then the university in the end, you're doing all that just to get uh, on average monthly wage, let's just say it's 2K, right? And that can be 2% of 100K that's a single 100k account so that's the way i see it like the risk to reward in this game is 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 it's unheard of like it's, it's, you can't compare it yeah. to 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 the to the um yeah to the work life really so that's the way I, just, that's just the way i see it um so when with that in mind i will never ever think about giving up uh, i don't think anyone else should think about giving up when it comes to that um because it's there these prop firms are a blessing if it's not for prop firms okay you've got your own capital and you can always grow your own capital but it will be a lot slower but with these uh, prop firms, I don't see them going anywhere. Um, I, in fact, see them multi more growing. I've seen them more and more come out. Um, so, yeah, with that being in mind, I don't think anyone should give up. Um, one thing that Raul says, my mentor, was, you know, the only people that do fail in, in this industry are the ones that fail. People that stay in this industry after five years coincidentally become, like, extremely successful. So if you can just stay in the game for just over three years to four years and you stay in it, the longer you stay in it, the more chance you have of being successful. But if you don't even try... If you don't even attempt, there's no upside to that. It's just purely failing. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people come into trading with the idea they're going to make it in three to six months, mm -hmm. but they'll go to uni and spend, you know, four years, that's, five that's years same, yeah. to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. But if you come into this niche with that same mentality that you'd go to university with and you say, I'm going to dedicate the next four years of my life to become the best trader I can be. Mm -hmm. And no matter what happens, I'm going to think about this and obsess over this exactly. every day. Yeah. You'll make it, you know, like mm -hmm. you'd have to be extremely, extremely unlucky yeah, to not make it after obsessing over Literally. for if four years. If you're going to give years. university a shot for four years or college included, right? Well, let's just say university for now if you're going to give college a shot for three years when you're going in monday to friday right making the effort going there studying bro when i was going to university the teachers were going there just reading off the board mm. right presentations I, I found the presentations myself and just watched them online so you're making the effort going there four years you know just to come out with something very average so imagine you just put that energy which i did because i was doing it both full time and you can argue that it wasn't even the same energy because it was occupied by a university at the same time as well but I'm saying, imagine you just, like you said, um, putting that exact same amount of time into another craft. Mm. It, if it wasn't even trading, let's just say it was, you know, any any other venture, you are 100, like, if you're not successful after that four years, come to me. Yeah, and I'll refund you whatever you <laughs> spent. Yeah, but that's the way I see it. Like, it's, it's it doesn't make sense, you know, for it to not work out. Yeah. Really. One question I get a lot, and you probably get it a lot as well, is how do you find the motivation to study or to backtest? And for me... I never really needed motivation. I was just, it, yeah. I just lived and breathed it. Do you know what I mean? Literally. I just wanted to be doing it all the time and I wanted to obsess over it. I was obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those people? Because I'm, I'm sure you get similar questions, bro, I'm not motivated on some days. I don't want to back test. You know what I say to them? Like, okay, go on a 100K demo account, put on a 2% risk of a trade just randomly. Like, let's just say you put on and just see those numbers and see that, okay, let's say it goes red or goes blue. Let's say it goes blue and you start seeing that profit in your, uh, you know, in, in your uh, P&L, right? 
that's proof right there. That's the motivation right there in front of you why you should be trading. Mm. There's nowhere anywhere else in, in the world from what I can think of. Maybe like, I don't know, like crazy crypto flips and things like that um, with those crazy percentage gains. But I don't know any other industry, any other, um, yeah, just sort of venture that I can think of. Like, you know, SS, um, social media marketing, Shopify dropshipping, Amazon FBAs. Nothing compares to trading. You're not going to see that type of money that quickly um, ever apart from trading. So that motivation right there is enough. Like if, when I start seeing literally profit, going up that was enough motivation for me um even seeing the amount that you could lose you know and then that that's the motivation again like i said if you could lose it all you can also you know gain it back as well so never yeah never really that need need that motivation but when you do also start seeing you know people like raul and you start people like the q banks uh james storms um all these other you know really good traders even uh We've got uh, Yarimi from, I think, oh, we're in London, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, around here, you know, we've got people like him, you know, with all these like supercars and these, um, just living that, that trader lifestyle, you know, all these other um, traders doing that. So that's motivation right there. Mm. Um, so yeah, definitely N never really needed that motivation. It's, it should be there for you if you really are about it like that. Yeah, I completely agree. I think if you need to find the motivation, then you probably just don't want it enough. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want it as badly as you think. Um, let's talk a bit about your trading style now. So you mentioned before you just used to trade, you just used to trade GU. Mm -hmm. What do you, what instruments do you trade now? So right now it's just specifically gold. Okay. So I'm just gold. And um, the session that I trade mainly is just London. So uh, the way I've been going about it for the last couple of months, um, even when I spoke with uh, my guy Claudio about it, he put me onto this a uh, little bit. He gave me that extra bit of a, a tip on this and that was really just to look at that um what i do really do now is just trade that four hour candle um which is like the 10 a.m candle that's pretty much it so when i'm looking at that that's the area which i'm looking to trade um a little bit before it as well a little bit into new york but mainly that's sort of my window from around 10 a.m till three and yeah that's that's pretty much what i'm doing one pair one session less stress less variables now because if i'm trading three sessions or if i'm trading both sessions fully now, when I look back at my journal after, let's say, 20 trades, is it the fact that I traded in New York the trade was lo uh, lost? Or is it the fact that I traded a different setup? You know, because if you, if you have different setups, I mean, not different setups, because I do have a, different, a couple of different setups, you know, within my strategy. I'm talking about if you have, uh, if, you're, if you're scalping one moment in one session, but then you're also trading, swing trading in the other, in trading in the other, it's all over the place. So the variables, they have to be reduced for you to get the optimal results. And that's what I've done with my trading. So one pair, one session. And with gold, you know, it moves pretty volatile. It's pretty volatile. So compared to the FX pairs. So with that, what I've actually happened to, you know, notice is there's, there is actually available like a trade almost every single day for me. So I don't have to worry about the idea of me being super, super patient and waiting for a setup because with how volatile it is, it pretty much presents me with a setup almost every single day. But even then, I will still hold back because there'll be like the red fold, the CPI or FOMC or um, interest rates. And like I spoke with my um, academy members literally last week and said, look, guys, this is a this is a trade opportunity right now, which I see working out. But because of this news, I'm not going to take it. What happened? It, it hit the area. It started, you know, going into profit from that area. News came out, would have hit the stop loss straight away and then went back into profit. Mm. So that's where we when, when you start to eliminate all these extra variables and limit it to a specific window for example and a specific session and a specific pair you first of all know how that pair moves you understand its behavior and then you start to see patterns at certain times repeating time and time again and that's one thing i would recommend to everyone is just try and test maybe something like gold it's not to be gold it can be an industry it can be anything but just try and limit it to one or two pairs um, and just really focus on those only because the less variables you have um the more, you know, the better the results are going to be. Yeah. Really. What do you think about trade management? You know, there's so many different opinions on it. Some people say, leave your stop loss at your invalidation level, you know, leave your target at your target. Some people say have exit signals. So if you're on your way to TP and you see a, I don't know, one hour engulfing, bearish engulfing, mm -hmm. close the trade. How do you kind of manage your trades when, when you get in a position? So for me personally, um, I trade each one of my funded accounts differently. Okay. So one account I will have, or a couple of accounts I'll have aggressive accounts where I will usually just leave the stop loss and let it, you know, do its thing. If it happens to hit stop loss, hit stop loss. But there's been so many times where if I was to move my price, my um, stop loss to break even, especially with gold, because it's actually a very volatile pair, which really does take a lot of liquidity and, and it does those liquidity sweeps quite a bit. 
Um, I've noticed that it can come almost exactly to my break-even entry, uh, my entry basically, and then go straight back into profit times three, three X. So that's why with those aggressive accounts, I kind of leave them like that. And then with the conservative accounts, yes, I will also move them to break even. So it's not so much I have a specific plan. It's just more so um, on one account where if I, I wanted to, when, usually when I see I wanted to, um, I'm happy to take profits fully. Um, no regret if I, you know, if it goes, there's like literally last week I took a trade on a one to two and it, it secured it, but it went back to my entry. If I moved it to, to, if I moved it to break even, it would have, you know, stopped me out. But then it also went over to like, you know, take profit for about five times the amount. But I don't really mind. I made my two times uh, the reward and that's like a good sort of target for me. So yeah, to answer the question, I would say I do trade each account differently based on the um, aggression. So if it's an aggressive account, I'll leave it alone. Um, if it's a conservative account, I'll move it to break even. And that's kind of it really. I don't really have a set specific rule like that. Okay, yeah. got you. And time frames. you mentioned you trade that four hour candle. What time frames do you actually go on to identify the trades? Yeah, so it, I... I'll be honest, it has to be all time frames. I never, I'm that type of person that just goes on, you know, it's, it's, it's all to do with this one specific time frame. It really is just um, a mixture of all time frames. And with the sort of entry signals that we go over uh, in the academy, it's a, a lot of time frame, time frame correlation is involved. So when you really understand how trends, are, you know, there's, there's trends within trends. And when you can identify that on the smaller time frames, that's when you can go ahead and, you know, utilize that. But with me right now, um, thankfully, after you know going through so much hardship in terms of hopping from one strategy to another, from one strategy to another, I've actually had now a lot of experience with SMC, a lot of experience with support and resistance. So there'll be times where I'll see an opportunity for an SMC type of trade, you know, um, those you know, specific order block trades, if you want to call it. And the, what I like to do is if I'm trading off my main primary strategy, it's mainly just off a level to level basis. But you have to understand that, let's say that level to level is part of the one hour uptrend, right? But within that, there's going to be five minute higher highs and higher lows, which consist of that impulse of that one hour leg. So with that being in mind, you can now take advantage of that five minute structure, for example, and find those higher lows using techniques like SMC if you really want to right and that's sometimes what I will do if I really want to scale into certain trades and just you know dabble into that a little bit because this is something that I use as like an extra confluence not so much as like a primary strategy just something that I've seen work well um, within my strategy so if I'm taking a trade just to uh, recap from a level to a level I know for a fact that will you know consist of certain maybe higher lows uh, on a smaller time frame and then I um, you know, may look to use um, you know, five minute time frame, 15 minute time frame to just catch those higher lows and potentially scale in. But mainly, yeah, it's a mixture of all the time frames when it's at my levels. Got you. Yeah. And are you purely technical or do you do any fundamental? Yeah, yeah. So purely technical, uh, but I am trying to get into fundamentals a little bit more because I know that's an area that there's no harm in learning. You know, it, it can definitely help. So um, it's something that I'm trying to get into right now. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's fine. Well, now you're trading full time. What What is your kind of day look like you wake up and yes yeah, so what happens it, it, every day you sometimes can be different but when I'm in my routine routine it is it's very it is very nice like it's a very clean simple life and um, what I was like I'd say just a couple months before Ramadan which was in March March April time because that can your sleep cycle's a bit upside down now because mm. you're eating at like 3 a.m in the morning um, so it's from that point I've, I found it a bit hard to recover but I'm trying to get back onto it right now but to answer the question very simply i would i would actually wake up around 5 6 a.m um just have a little bit of breakfast go to the gym and then that's it from after i come back from gym usually around that 8 a.m time um i'd send a signal out to my gj traders to the breakout um, group because that usually occurs quite frequently um you can see a setup with that you know almost every single day um and then yeah that's it then back at home uh, 10 a.m. if I want to, you know, look for a trade and 9 a.m., 11 a.m. sort of time, 9, 10, 11, the, around that window, I will look at my gold um, and see what I see there. Um, and then that's pretty much it. I mean, if I just see something, set my alerts at my support resistance level, um, wherever, it, wherever I feel price is close to. And if it hits that area, just look at my phone. I, I mainly trade off the phone. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about that. You know, trading off the phone is too dangerous, things like that. But personally, for me, I just trust like where my fingers go. I don't actually trust the mouse. Like okay. I have the misclicks, the pop ups, the other hundred applications running in the background. I don't know. I've just never been a fan of really using the, the PC and the laptop as much. So 
mainly off the phone and everyone will see that a lot of my time through Instagram is on my phone. But yeah, um, that's pretty much it. And then if after that, I'll just go out. There's so many things to do. Like, I don't know, it's, it can be anything. It might be um, golf, it might be going out to eat, it might be football training. Um, it might just be even sometimes just playing FIFA. Um, just little things like that, just to chill. Because th- that, that, that window that I have, it really can take up a bit of time in terms of, you know, brain power so when i do when it is time for like i said that my window of trading to begin i will analyze and i'll in, analyze intensely but maybe maybe for like only half an hour maybe for like an hour max but i'm really just looking at the market trying to plan everything out i'm exaggerating not an hour max half an hour yeah mm-hmm. so that's it when i do that that's it that's like a lot of i need to be tunnel vision i need to be focused after that point then i just chill then when i'm in the trade if i happen to find a trade maybe like around 11 12 new york one i i don't like to just when I said set and forget before, but what I meant by that was just sort of um, price comes to my area, I find my interest signal, I enter, and then what I actually do from that point is actually watch the trade. I don't, I don't do the, I do just, I do actually sometimes you know leave it alone, but and set my alerts. But what I don't do is completely set and forget. I don't want people to confuse it with that where I actually just leave it and I completely forget about it. Yeah. I do set my take profit, set my stop loss, set my alerts for TP1 and things like that. And I'll just check it every 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Usually my trades last no more than, obviously they vary, but on average I'd say no more than like two hours. Oh, wow. Three hours. So yeah. you're very much a day trader. Yeah, day trader. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So three hours, I'd say on average is really the length. I've seen your sort of, uh, your, your your trades, I think you're like a swing trader. Yeah. Right? So I can yeah. hold it from a day to two or three weeks. No, nah, I could never do that. <laughs> I could never do that. I've, I've tried that so many times and the way my sleep got, gets ruined, like, I've just entered a trade and then in the middle of the night just checking it and then you know you're having the worst sleep ever yeah um just for it, you to wake up in the end it hits your stop loss yeah I mean, sometimes i've tried that sometimes obviously it take profit but never been a fan of it for me personally because i just i like to get in and out within the day mm-hmm. and i found that to be really the easiest way about going yeah uh, with my trades yeah you get used to it after a while everyone's like you have yeah. to be so patient and sometimes it's true you know you wait weeks for a setup you know mm-hmm. for that kind of like daily true. pullback and then yeah, the trade comes and it ends up hitting stop loss but it's it's part of the game you know mm-hmm. i've got a uh, my win rate is probably about 30%, 35%, right, really? um, relatively low, but you trade with positive risk to reward. Yeah, of course. You can you can make money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, cool. Let's talk about the, the retail trading niche a little bit or, you know, advice to people watching this who are, you know, trying to make it. They, you know, look at you and kind of see your journey and, you know, want to kind of replicate what, what you've done. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say are the main characteristics someone would need? You know, 19-year-old, 20-year-old watching this, they... Want to be a trader, you know, they want that trader lifestyle. What are the main characteristics you think they need? So, yeah, from like the root level, from the core, you have to be someone that grinds, someone that's determined, someone that's persistent and just willing to take the risk of maybe working alongside your day job uh, and trading or putting that money, that, that that money that you've made and, you know, investing it into challenges. The amount of times where I'd, you know, finish my warehouse, uh, we'd get paid every Friday in the warehouse. And the amount of times I'd hear my some of my co-workers saying they've blown it in the weekend. I'm thinking how that's like it was around the time it was like 400 pounds a week which is decent um around 400 pounds a week yeah and they just spend it all on the weekend I'm thinking how like, and I'd be just be saving up and literally okay food here and there but mainly challenges so you have to be willing to put that risk in and really um take that hit if it feels like that because eventually that pain is going to be rewarded so when you when you think of it from that point of view um yeah that's something you definitely have to have persistence and that determination from as as a, as a as a grinder, someone that really puts in that work from the start. Um, another thing, another characteristic you have to have is honestly to maintain a profitable mindset. You will find that in your journey, maybe for a week or a few days, or maybe in a couple of weeks, you will be profitable. Um, as in, you might go on a week, a week where it's all wins or a positive week at the end of the day, and you, and you felt like you traded well. The challenge is actually to maintain that forever, like forever. And the thing is, we are humans. And we are always going to have this anger, this impulsive decision making, this this kind of erratic behavior. But what we can't do is disable that because then we wouldn't be human. What we have to do is manage that. So you have to find out things in your life, which, you know, what you in terms of what you are. Um, trading for me, I found so many uh, parallels uh, with it with, with, in the charts and in life. Like whenever you take an L in real life, you know, it's as long as you're on the path of doing something uh, something productive and something for your own good let's say you're trying to make a business or you're trying to help someone out but you know there's a few um obstacles in the way 
they're kind of like the higher lows if that if that makes sense so you have mm. to really just think of it like that and um really just maintain that profitable mindset because that's really the challenge there's times where i've had profitable weeks and i've really felt like in the mood and then that weekend that's the thing that makes or breaks a trader because a person that you know finishes you know let's say, let's say they don't journal the trades on a friday night or a saturday um they don't back test on the weekend they just felt like they hacked it now over that monday to friday or mm. the last couple of weeks they've just hacked it then just for them to you know carry on now with that same you know fake mindset and go in on a monday trade off their impulsive um, emotions then blow their accounts and then it's then it's a really big cycle so yeah maintaining a profitable mindset is one of the musts and that consists of you being a controlled person a calm person a person that uh, makes everything into statistics and journals everything because when you have things pen on paper things written down it's clar it's clar uh, clarification right there and that's like the number one thing uh i feel like a lot of traders aren't willing to do yeah you might be back testing and just you know showing all these little um models that, that are you know being made in the markets and making little like instagram reels out of them and things like this and all these other things but are they really journaling are they really putting in that time to showcase their results to themselves and reflect on them so that's number one um maintain that profitable mindset i would say definitely yeah just to control your emotions control that impulsive decision decision making um that because at the end of the day you have to think of it this way you can have a nice streak of controlling your emotions let's say 10 trades in a row you were doing that very very well very very well it just takes one bad trade to blow your whole account mm. so when you think of it in that way and it, to be honest when you get humbled in the market so many times and you blow so many accounts like i have it really that that, that becomes your teacher experience is the best teacher so you can give someone you know the full uh, breakdown the full strategy the full blueprint on all this on all this but it really is up to them as a person and to see how they learn from their mistakes uh personally for me i heard all this whatever i'm saying right now i heard it all this guru was saying this you know this guy was saying that on instagram control your emotions be patient um have a life outside of trading you know don't give it so much screen time uh and so on but what would i do just say yeah to that in my head not write it down not make it into a sticky note that i put on my computer or on my wall and read it like physically it might seem cringy for some people like yeah that's something that you have to do but okay don't do it then see how far you go but <laughs> but i would actually do that now that I've, ever since i implemented that my trading changed but yeah literally when i just have that those reminders uh, on there um it really does um make a massive positive difference it's that effort of actually going there and writing it out putting it on your wall because now you're treating it like a business at the end of the day you know your business um like my guy claudio said you know you have your hours of operation so like every business does you know they work from maybe eight till four or nine till five for example right that's their hours after those hours are up they close up shop shop and that's it they're doing their own thing after that so you treat trading like a business and you'll go very far in life like just really business businessify if that's even a word but just make it into a very business environment you know your you got your office that's your desk you've got um your hours of operation that's your trading window you've got your specific pair that's like your product you've got um your style of trading that's like your marketing for example you know if you think of it that way yeah. it's all these little ways of going about it and the more you can do uh, you know related to a business um the easier trading the journey is going to be because if it's not easy it's actually very very difficult you're going to go in big circles and yeah another thing i would say lastly would be honestly to trial a strategy out and test it over a long duration whether that's a month two months or three months whatever it is you have to be willing to stick to that strategy and actually apply it like a robot if you don't you're actually disrespecting yourself because now you know you don't and now you break this rule what are you going to do next you're going to revenge trade you're going to overtrade and these are the two biggest killers of a of an account so if you're going to revenge trade and overtrade that's going to cost you not just money it's going to cost you time because how easy is it going to be to make that money back not just make it back but now make it back and then continue on the right path so with that in mind um you have to really have something that you believe in a strategy that you believe in in terms of let's say support resistance smc whatever it is you feel like it suits your personality and by personality some people might be thinking like yeah you're just talking about personality but by personality i mean you have to be someone like yourself for example you can hold trades for two weeks and things like that right so that's a that's this type of strategy that you can resonate with for me i have a you know a time frame that i like to trade on let's say the 15 the 5 and the 1 hour right yeah i like to take a tra uh, the duration of a trade is what also um reflects your personality and yeah just things like that so and the style of support resistance retail whatever it might be they all reflect 
your personality as a trader. So the moment you can identify that, so the moment you identify that, that's when you're going to be on the path to, you know, finding a strategy that you're comfortable with and then having that confidence to actually test it out over like the course of like, you know, one month, two months, three months and really get those real results from that, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, it's just really about that, um, really about just believing in yourself and trusting your analysis, trusting yourself. If you have that belief in, your, belief in yourself and you treat your time with respect, as in, look, you're taking time out every day to analyse the charts. You're taking time out to um, journal. You're taking time out to just do all these little extra little things. If you're going to do all this, then the least you can do is actually follow your plan, follow your set of rules. Because if you don't, then you're doing a disservice to yourself. So whenever I start to think of it in that way, where like I'd be in a challenge, I'd be up 4%, 5%, 6%, then I'd risk 3% to just get to that profit target and then just blow it. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. You're doing yourself a disservice because now what do you have to do? Try and make that back whilst you're in that emotional state. Mm. And don't forget, there's no one here to help you in terms of no one's going to say to you, oh, you don't take that trade. It's a bad trade. Don't take that. You're in, you're in revenge mode right now. No one's going to tell you that. You have to be your own teacher. You have to be your own sort of mentor in a way. You know, before you find any other mentor out there, you have to be someone that can control your own emotions first. Then, you know, look, look into the other things like that. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Trading is more about you against yourself than you against the markets, exactly. right? And I think so many people are so focused on the strategy that they forget to focus on themselves and actually becoming somebody who can execute on that system through the tough times. But yeah, 100%. Also, coming back to a point you made about the w the winning weeks, right? When you get the winning weeks, one thing that I advise a lot of people to do, and I, I do this myself, is when I have you know, those periods where my trades are hitting, I journal not just my trading, but also my life mm -hmm. very thoroughly. So that when I have those periods of drawdown, I can come back and I can see, okay, I was waking up at this time, I was eating this, I was yeah. doing this, I was reading this book, I was yeah. doing X, Y, Z. Whereas now, you know, I'm staying in bed longer, I'm not eating as healthy or whatever it is, right? You can kind of find patterns that yeah, kind of get one, you in that one, flow one, state. One of those things for yeah. me was sleep. Uh, yeah. The big one was sleep for me. Uh, the amount of times where I'd be just maybe back testing till super late at night. And then that's another thing I would, I would want to touch on as well, just that, backtest mode kings those people those backtest warriors people that can just you know go into backtest mode and then just put on like if it hit this area and i'll put a three pips top loss i would have gone i made a one to 17 one to 55 yeah and it's like yeah cool you might have but did you execute it in real time that's the challenge the market is something that you have to be confident in where you're going to be able to execute things in real time find things in real time identify in real time and actually execute yeah scared money doesn't make money and you know without risk without it without risk there's no reward so the the problem with backtesting which you know some people may um you know find is the fact that it gives you a sense of false confidence mm -hmm. and it gives you the sense of you know false hope and makes you believe that you've taken a certain trade and the amount of times where you know backtesting is good to an extent where you can use it to identify your pattern recognition so for me it was backtesting was really just something that would i would look back on to say that okay at this time this happened and roughly around that time you know there was something that was printed here or there was a type of you know price action that occurred here which resulted in you know, in this type of move and that's it I leave it at that I don't dwell on it I don't zoom into it to a point where I'm just finding out the exact area where I could have entered and things like that it's just more sort of okay that's what happened there it repeated again and again and again okay I'm going to leave it because the moment you start to go and delve into it a little bit too much it's like you go down that rabbit hole of giving yourself that false confidence and really just tricking yourself and tricking your mind and that's really the wrong way to go about it um the amount of people that will feel like the, it also gives it makes you it gives you a feeling where you're you've done it if that makes sense you've actually taken that trade when you, you get really, a dopamine hit from yeah, it right exactly. yeah yeah, yeah your dopamine hit and it makes you feel like you've actually taken that trade when in reality you haven't so when it does come to real real market conditions and maybe that setup is there you're not going to see it the only place you can actually practice is for, for to make a real impact in your trading is in the live market conditions. Of course, for beginners, I would always recommend go to d demo, start with paper trading, but don't stay there too long. The market is the best is the best teacher. It's, it's, it's your mentor. It's not your enemy. It's your teacher. And the moment you realize that and you can actually start to work with it like it's a like it's a person and just really start to work with it. Yeah, you're going to fail a few times. Right. But if you start to work with it and start to pr actually apply your trading strategy whenever you think or whenever your brain and your eyes tell you that it has now um, identified a potential setup and you actually execute because that's it when you break that little you know feeling in let's say that, that feeling in your stomach where I'm going to enter the trade and people actually go and enter it right and I go and enter it for example when I was in that stage it would feel 
it'd feel a bit weird like you know you'd feel a bit scared and that's it now you start thinking about it but when it starts to work out which it will don't forget like i know people say you know it's a very tough game and all that but don't forget there's also, there's actually a very big upside to this there's times where it will, it will work your job is then to just really repeat that rinse and repeat rinse and repeat so again like i said it goes go back always goes back to me now with this one pair one session and just really seeing that thing happen over and over again at the same times in that same window it's just it, it's so simple it's actually funny and that's one thing i was talking to so uh, my um brother the other day and it was the idea of really just understanding that when it, when a trade fails it's not so much the technical analysis that's failed you or it's not so much your ability to recognize the uh, pattern that's occurred incorrectly it's more so your ability as a you know trader to say okay that's occurred now let me just stay relaxed let me just accept it and let me just move on right because a lot of traders now when they lose a trade that's it they go back to the drawing board and they start to reevaluate the whole system again and that's the wrong way to go about it chances are in reality you've actually you actually know your system you actually know your technical analysis pretty well right you actually do because you wouldn't have put that much time into it and then not be so confident in it because the truth is you are pretty good at it the only thing you're not good at is taking this loss and you have to be a professional loser in this game to become a professional winner because it really does that that loss is what can make make or break you that 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 period of time where you've taken a big hit or you've taken a loss that what you do from that point onwards really determines who you are as a trader and for me in the past yeah i'd blow in a uh, i'd blow it um, i'd lose a trade and then i would revenge trade it over trade to try and get it back because the idea the corporate world gives you the nine to five world is if you just show up you'll get paid if you if you work in nine to five you know you'll get paid if you just if you're just there present you'll get yeah. paid so you're substituting your time for money right whereas in this game you're not getting paid for showing up you can show up 365 days out of 365 days right but you're not you, that doesn't mean you're making a penny so you get paid for the decisions that you make in trading you don't get paid for the time when you understand that and you get and you understand that you get paid for the executions specifically that you make not oh this was a trade I, I called the other week and it went on for like 101 to 20 but and you, and you didn't catch it nobody cares about that I'm sorry to say nobody cares about that uh, nobody will care about that and you shouldn't care about it either the only thing you have to care about is how much how well you're doing how much money you're making and are you are you actually following through with your analysis and the moment you start to break that that little barrier there where you know what you just say forget it now that's it this is my analysis i'm going to take it win or loss the moment you follow your plan you'll feel so good and the thing is understanding that you know following a plan um, or following your trading plan um it, it doesn't require you to feel good that's one thing. It, it, there's nothing in your training plan that means that, oh, if you follow, you know, you'll feel good if you follow this training plan. No, it, it's not a guarantee. But what is a guarantee is, let's say you follow your set of rules correctly, you execute when it's time to execute, you um, place a stop loss in the correct area where you're supposed to take, you know, place it, and then you see the trade work out. That's much better feeling than, you know, if you just trade off impulse, you see the trade, you know, maybe actually go into your area where you should have taken a trade, and then now you've in drawdown or you've hit a stop loss, and then it goes into profit. You know that's a much worse position to be in but there'll still be that one trader there now that's heard this say, says yes to it in their head but they'll still go ahead and act off their impulse because they feel like they'll miss the trade or yeah. the trade will go from them or former will come in and that's really that and that's where i can say as much as i can but the experience is what's going to be their best teacher mm. if that makes sense i completely agree with that. i think there's a big difference between being a good trader and being a good analyst and i think so many people are just focused on being a good analyst mm -hmm. that they forget you know, after you've done the analysis, you need to execute, yeah. right? Like, I'm sure you probably see some guys that they mark up the chart and their analysis is correct, but they yeah. actually lost money mm -hmm. because they took the trade, it went in a bit of drawdown, they closed it early, and then it started making a move, they chased it, and then they closed yeah. it. And everything was right, their analysis was perfect, but they didn't make any money from the trade. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think being a good trader and a good analyst are two, two very com different things. Yeah, they're yeah. two very different things. And, you know, people should put more emphasis on being a good trader mm -hmm. because that's what's going to make you the money, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, and like you say, you're just paid to make high quality decisions. You know, it's almost yeah. counterintuitive, especially when you've come from a traditional nine to five. You work eight hours, you get paid X amount. Here, you yeah. can work eight hours and actually come out at a net loss, right? You can actually lose money. So, and that's where I've seen like a lot of traders that are not a lot of traders who have just kind of actually jumped into trading and they've not actually done nine to fives like that. Um, I've actually seen that they, um, I've actually seen that they, they tra they're, they're very good traders because they just they've seen the money from yeah. an early stage and they've kind of run with it. 
there are a lot of trades like that that I've seen and they've not really worked a nine to five job, you know, for quite you know, at all really. Um, so they never really understood that, you know, the, the substituting your time for money. They just kind of look at, good on them. They're actually just seeing what they're um, trading and they're trading it, right? And that's the main part, you know, you just see what you trade, uh, sorry, uh, trade what you see, not what you feel. Yeah. So that's one of the things Mark Douglas says, and that's one of the biggest things that I've actually seen um, work well in my trading. Just if you can actually break that barrier in that, that threshold of not just, you know, analyzing what you see, but trading what you see um, and not what you feel instead, you will see tremendous growth and you'll see yourself being in that mindset. Because if you can start to do that, you're already like halfway there. Psychology is literally just 80%, um, well, I'd say 90% really um, of, of your of your trading. The 5% is buying, 5% selling. So it really just kind of makes it like that. So if you can have that, that solid mindset, solid set of rules, solid plan, and you just follow it sensibly, you will see growth faster than, you know, than anything else really. Yeah. See it. We've spoken a lot about psychology and, and execution. Um, what are the top tips you'd give people watching this to improve their psychology and their execution? Because, you know, people talk a lot about trading psychology and some a lot of people don't know what it is, right? Mm. Obviously, traders like us, we, we kind of understand what it means. You know, we've been in the game for yeah. many years, but for a lot of new guys, okay, I need to work on my psychology. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, what what so tips would you give people? The thing with psychology is it's a very, very broad subject and people that haven't, I feel like people that haven't really felt the pain or really had an account blown like that, they, they, they need to feel that to really see the growth. A lot of amazing traders that I've seen or heard of um, and met, they've also had very, very big losses, right? So I'm not saying blow your account, but what I am saying is you have to experience a little bit of pain to find that growth, right? Because only through pain and through experience you will find that that true um true growth and that true reward i can tell all the viewers here that you know do this do that do that but they th there's nothing to stop them from doing the opposite but of course when it comes to tips the usual are just of course journaling your trades is it, it seems like a thing that's repeated so many times but what people don't talk about is the fact that the effort of going out and doing it like there's times of course i'm human i'm not a perfect trader either i'm not a perfect you know human which is like a robot There'll be times where I don't feel like doing my journaling. There'll be times where I don't feel like uh, back testing. There'll be times where I don't feel like um, you know going on the charts. But I, I, you have to. That's the part that will make make or break you as a trader. Um, that's the part that sets you apart from the majority of traders. Um, when it comes to just general psychology, I feel like personally for me, having that one to two risk to reward, which is again something that uh, my guy Paladin he has really talked in depth on um, and helped me understand it at least. Um, to a very good level um, is is a big part because that one to two, the way I, the way I, I would be that type of trader that chases big risk reward setups without having a solid strategy in the, in the first place. So of course, having a solid strategy is the main thing. But when you have that smallish risk reward, even I don't even underestimate like one to 1.5s even, but because that, that win rate for me personally is what is a, is a big help. So sometimes just lowering your risk reward for the sake of getting a win can be positive um it definitely affects you you know po positively and it can lead to a better you know set of results in the future um instead of forcing unless you've got a different type of you know strategy but for me that one to two doubling your risk in a way is a, a good way to go about it in my opinion um another sort of trading sort of psychology tip the best one i could think of would be it's really, it's just so many, there's so many all over my Instagram. I've got and, so many. But yeah. I'm just trying to think of like the best ones. I know it's a layered question. There's so many different There's so variables. many levels you can yeah. go to, but uh, really, yeah, experience is your best teacher, risk management and things like that. They, I think, I think you, when you see that, that, that risk to reward play out in your favor after you've taken a loss, for example, um, that, that really will, 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 will show you the difference that, that, that your trading strategy can make and how psychology can really help you because in fact a good one would be to trade it slowly from drawdown there's too many traders even i've been a victim of it where if you're in a drawdown period which a lot of traders will be in um just take it slower from that point there's been so many times where i've not wanted to maybe lower my risk when i'm in drawdown but that's only going to help you it only makes sense to do that right the amount of times i've been in drawdown and i've tried to double my risk to try and get out of it quickly 
it just burns you quickly. You're going backwards faster now. So that's the thing that, that really helps me understand, you know, the importance, importance of psychology and risk management um, is honestly just to um, understand risk management. But mainly, I would say that one thing just came to my head just then. Honestly, it's really just about chart, um, chart time and um, hobbies and outside life, right? Yeah. If you have a life outside of trading, believe me, you will you will treat trading with more respect. You will trade when you're supposed to. You'll trade what you see and you will actually trust your analysis. If you're a person that isn't making money outside of trading, if you're a person that's bored outside of trading with real life, you need to stop trading ASAP and you need to start, you know, doing something productive with your life. Um, something that's going to make you happy outside of trading because you shouldn't be looking at the market and thinking that's going to be my dopamine boost. That's going to be my sense of happiness. Like, you're treating as like a drug now. Like that's, that's actually very bad. So don't do that. If you're having trouble with psychology in terms of whether it's fear of entering a trade, whether it's um, you know fear of losing a trade, whether it's just just finding something from any type of psychological barrier from trading, first thing I would do is actually do something that's psychologically demanding. Um, like what I actually did. I don't know if you know, but I did a half marathon about. Uh, about a month ago now. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah. And I did it straight after Ramadan. So prior to Ramadan, which was from like, so I, was I booked it. I signed up for it in February, right? And I was training for it through February. Uh, sorry, February, March, April. Yeah, so February, March, I was training for it consistently. Then I heard that. Well, I, I didn't hear, but I obviously knew that Ramadan was around the corner. So I had to fast for 30 days. And that, with, with fitness at least, when you're doing your stamina training, you know, you can in, in, increase your stamina quite quickly. Sorry, slowly over a long period of uh, period of time. But if you stop it for even just a few days or a few yeah. weeks, you know, you'll drop so quickly. So I didn't do any training for the last for 30 days. I've got a fast metabolism. As you can see, I'm pretty thin, pretty <laughs> slim. So I don't, I can't be, you know, fasting and doing training for half a month at the same time. It'd be dangerous for me actually. Yeah. So I didn't want to go down that route. So literally two weeks before the marathon, I ended up training. And don't forget, this is also during my last week of uh, exams for university as well. Right. So had to get that week done. Then I was just two weeks of training for this marathon, doing five miles. So if you can do something that will push you physically, mentally, um, psychologically, uh, outside of trading, like a marathon, like, um, you know, going to the, even even just going to the gym, right? But not so much, you don't have to go be that person that wakes up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. and do that type of lifestyle, if that's not you. Just, just don't lie to yourself, you know, Follow through with what you actually want to do. So if that means waking up at 9 p.m., do it. Don't don't miss that. Because now you've not woken up at 6, 7 a.m., for example. You've woken up at 9 p.m., 9 a.m. And now go to the gym. Now eat what you're supposed to eat. Nobody, don't, don't force that lifestyle if it's not you. You know, too many people are trying to do that thing. If it's not you, don't do it. Eventually, you might end up finding out that it's better for you and you might end up, you know, going to that. In the end, it might. But to start off, always start off by following through with your promises get some promises written down to yourself, have some targets in mind. Always goal setting, I've always found that to be um, what works best. Uh, some people, again, might find it a bit weird, a bit like just extra, but pen to paper, not typing it out. I mean, pen to paper, there's some magic in pen to paper um, and sticking it on your wall, there's something there. I don't know what it is, but it definitely works. Um, so so like I said, you're doing something physically demanding because if you can do a, a marathon, half marathon, because I want to now, now I've got this half marathon done, um, with only two weeks of training, I want to test myself out again in the you know in a few months' time and see if I can do that again, and beat my mm. score. That's the type of person I am. So I know that if I can do something as physically demanding as that, trading is not going to be that hard. You know, trading if what clicking a couple of buttons is not that hard. So following a set of rules that's not hard. So doing something physically demanding and actually sticking to your promises, they're the two main things I would say. That if you can do them outside of trading your trading life will be a lot, lot easier. Yeah, I completely agree. Tr trading almost takes you on this journey to become the best version of yourself, not 100%. just the best trader. So like you said, doing things that are physically demanding, you know, pushing yourself to, you know, limits or places that you didn't know you had in you, mm -hmm. that's needed to become the best trader you can be, right? Because it is, you know, although it is just clicking buttons, it is psychologically demanding, right? Um, you need to show up every day. So I completely agree with that. Um, talking about things outside of trading, um, income, outside of trading, you know, one of the beauties of trading is that it frees up your time, um, which rather than just, you know, twiddling your thumbs and watching Netflix, you can yeah, use exactly. to make, you know, more income and, you know, invest in other places and have capital to play with. So 
what's your view on that? You know, some people get mad when you say you're a trader and you've got this business or you do property as well. Mm-hmm. They kind of get angry. What, you, you don't just trade? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. So <laughs> some yeah. people get really worked up, but it's one of the beauties is that you can diversify, yeah, right? That's what trading is supposed to be yeah. for. It's, it's a tool to help you become you know, financially free to an extent where you can invest those profits into other things, into more of a bricks and mortar type business, into yeah. a more reliable in- income uh, income stream. So you can actually take your step, take a step back and then actually trade better. In the end, trading will always be that thing for me that, you know, you're not making, you know, £5,000 uh, in an hour or a couple hours from many, a lot of other businesses. Uh, for example, £10,000 in a couple hours. You're not making that type of money from other businesses. So with trading, it is something that is, um, it starts off as, as low risk, right? So the, the way I've seen it is this is a tool to get you rich, to a tool where it is low risk, but high reward, right? And if within that, you can actually have a strategy that is low risk, high reward, you're mm. winning. Because at the end of the day, your application fees for, let's say, a prop firm is only a few hundred dollars, but now you gain access to six figures. How's that even a bad thing, right? So for me, this is the first step to getting rich, which is, you know, using small amounts of money to make big money when you have that big money now you just have to use a you now you're using um a lot of money in a small sort of risk right so i'm putting it less in to property um i don't know if you know samuel leeds I think yeah, you follow yeah, him. yeah so uh, one thing i got to mention as well was during that pearson ferrier time when i was about 18 19 because i'm 22 now so when i was um 18 years old i actually met him i went to that crash course and I signed up for his academy. So I've been in his academy for the last four years and I've been soaking that up for the last, yeah, like I said, four years. Um, really understanding the whole game with property and things like that. And I'm in the middle of right now of making my, um, uh, what do you call it again? Deal sourcing uh, company. So you know about deal sourcing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'm also like a deal sourcer now. So I've um, worked with many other investors and things like that in the past. Um, but what we what we never d- had completed fully was the compliance side of things. So we never actually secured any deals just then, but I've always known how to find those deals, apply them. I went on all the like the extra um, courses to get it done and really understand the ins and outs. But right now we've actually started to make our um, deal sourcing company and looking to sort of expand that now and help other investors, people that are into the property side of things uh, and sorting them out with deals. Um, just for people watching this who don't know what deal sourcing is, is basically where you find a property and you find an investor to buy the property and then they pay you a fee for finding it. Exactly. Anywhere from two to five yeah. K roughly. Yeah, roughly like that. Yeah. So you definitely know your stuff about, yeah, the name <laughs> about that. Yeah, so that's just the deal sourcing side of things. And um, yeah, a lot of uh, investors, you know, I like to be the middleman, sort of lay back a little bit. But again, at the same time, I also like to um, look into the, 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 the rental side and the flips and things like that. So yeah, I'm definitely in that game as well. And also um, from my trading, from the journey that I've documented with the amount of people asking me for support and things like that, obviously only launched my academy like about a month ago, uh, a month and a half, two months ago, I'd say. Um, and that's just like an extra, um, it wouldn't even say it's an income like that. It's more sort of a platform which I can use to show many other people um, how I trade and may help them become financially free. And that's one of like my main goals. I know people might be thinking, oh, you're just selling a course and things like that. Bro, there's so much power in helping other people. And the way, you know, the people, what goes around comes around. And that energy that I'm putting out there, it is something that's even in my religion. If When we pass away, um, one of the few things that will still reward us is beneficial knowledge in general or information. And that is one thing that there, the amount of messages that I've got constantly from people telling me, oh, thanks, I made X amount of money. Um, I know a student just, and we've only launched it for like a few uh, few weeks now, but like about six weeks, I think it's been. So people are there making 12K withdrawals, 12% on their account, 6K withdrawals, 3K withdrawals, 4K withdrawals. These people hadn't seen a withdrawal before they joined. And this isn't to just brag about, you know, how good my course is and things like that. It's more sort of, look, I'm putting the value out there. The results are there. It's fully transparent. People have, you know, put all of my testimonials. I've got, I think, 200 testimonials now um, full of Instagram highlights. And even my my, my whole course page is so, sta- it's so basic. It's so static. And the only way I've promoted it up to now is literally through Instagram. And on Instagram, I've only got like 2K followers. Um, if that, I think 1,800 or something. So it's really just to put that, put that um, strategy out there, put that, value out there and people are seeing the value they're proving that it works not a single person has told me that it doesn't work it's, it's, it's the you're teaching something wrong they're seeing it work they're seeing me send the analysis out even in my signals group i'm sending people i'm here i'm seeing buys from here i'm seeing sales from and a lot of people look down on signals but the way i see it is i'm putting my reputation on the line i'm the guy that talks the talk can i walk the walk yeah well if i'm putting these signals out here buy here sell here 
so many other people are shying away from this that are calling themselves influencers and calling themselves um traders and yeah i do understand that signals are not something that will be a long-term thing for people but you have to understand that yeah of course i do want to eventually um get, go full-time into just my academy students because that's the primary way i trade but also within that i am showing people because i was also a breakout trader and a scalper i'm showing people here's the money to be made so a lot of start beginners um they just jump in my signals group they see that bit of money and now they're interested so that's really like the kickstarter for some people because prior to this like i was in my warehouse people were actually questioning me, is this even real? Like, are you doing this? And they wouldn't actually believe it. They'd, they'd say, is it real to a point where they don't have any belief in this whole trading thing? And so for me, like I said as well, putting out my signals, um, putting out my whole analysis prior to it, executing it, showing people proof. I'm literally screen recording it, you know, every single day. Uh, I know some people are probably getting bored of it and that, but I'm doing it for my own for my own sake to show testimonies and show te uh, the transparency there. So that's that's really the, the the other side of things uh, when it comes to outside of trading but it kind of is my trading itself that's leveraging all of this you know my my skill set my ability to make money from the markets and extract money from the markets and withdraw consistently every month every two weeks even now with these firms because you can see my results highlights as well all the certificates are there all the proof is there to show that i am making also money from the markets and then i'm actually going to help other people out they're making money from the markets everyone's winning and then, you know, now we're putting this type of money into a more bricks and mortar business, property, other, you know, um, businesses to then, to, so, it, so it can be a point where now it can help, you know, it can, it can become a generational thing. Mm. And that's the level I'm, I'm trying to get to now. Um, and I'm on the path to uh, Alhamdulillah getting. So, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the thing outside of, outside of trading, I'd say. It's amazing to see, bro. And like I say, you know, watching your journey, I'm looking forward to seeing the the next year, the next two years, yeah. three years, and, you and see all of this. Quite a while, I remember. Yeah. So seeing it all manifest in, in years to come, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Before we wrap up, we've been going, I think, just under two hours. So um, before we wrap up, any advice you would give to yourself when you first started trading that yeah. would have changed the trajectory or sped up your journey? Yeah, um, what would sure. you have done differently? I would say, well, first and foremost, um, invest in yourself and if that, I don't mean course just yet I mean or education and mentor first thing I would say is have discipline have have a routine have be someone that actually is true to themselves this is a game where you can you know lie to a lot of other people apart from yourself so many traders out there that are lying to themselves and you know are, are lying to the audience and then but, but at the end of the day you know yourself how good you are as a trader so First thing is be true to yourself from a core point, right? As a man to man, you need to be, or whoever it is you, you just trading, be true to yourself and follow through with your promises and be disciplined. When you got that down, you you really are setting yourself up for a very, very simple journey now. So when you have that set, right? Going to the gym on time, eating correctly, sleeping correctly, um, relaxing correctly. When you have this in mind first and you're, and you're following through with that, then the next step is to invest in your education. This traders out there for sure that are you know self-taught and they didn't do a course well done to you but personally i found that to be a very very long journey uh very you know a roller coaster you know this strategy that strategy not everyone's the same as these people so i would always say invest in yourself invest in terms of education there's transparent traders out there i'm showing my testimonies i'm showing my proof i'm showing all these other things and it doesn't have to be me but i've i've got this sort of you know this platform now to showcase my results and showcase my testimonies so invest in your education invest in something that you feel is right for you so if you've seen this, this like for example anyone it's not for me it could be anyone if you've seen geo's trades if you've seen my trades if you've seen this person's trades and, they, and and there's something that makes sense to you that okay i could probably probably hold the trade for two weeks i could probably hold the trade for a few hours that's more like me whichever one it is when you find that person try and learn from that person first of all see if they're legit and see if they're making withdrawals. Obviously, with my South African mentor, I didn't see a withdrawal really from him, but he was giving me the knowledge. There's a bit of a weird one there, but he took your withdrawal. I know he took my withdrawal literally. So, yeah, crazy one, um, that one. So transparency and yeah, proof of withdrawals. In the, the day, the most you can ever show to someone through trading is a withdrawal. Um, there's nothing more than that. I mean, executing it prior, analysis prior, execution, execution during, uh, withdrawal after. When you've got that down. That's it. Now you've got your little bit of a foundation set. You've got your discipline. You've got your sort of teacher. 
It's like, you know, if you're going to go to school, but prior to, you know, join your school life or your education life in the, uh, in, in, in the academic side of things, if you're a physically fit person and you're disciplined, you're most likely going to study better. You're probably going to get an A star a lot. You know, there's a higher chance of you getting like an A star um, compared to a lot of other students. So when you got that down, the rest, is, the rest of it is very, very simple. All you have to do from that point is take the time outside of the charts seriously in terms of journaling, in terms of um, looking back on your trades and reflecting and actually looking back at yourself because prior, to, I don't know if you know, but like in like the Asian um, sort of society and the Asian sort of household, looking at your emotions and, you know, evaluating your sort of, um, I would say your mental health in a way, isn't something that's looked at so much. I'm not saying it's a mental health thing. I'm talking about it, say, self-reflection type of thing so you have to un you have to really understand who you are that was something like you know i was ignoring as a, as, a, as a man i was like yeah i'm not i'm not an emotional person i'm not an impulsive person i'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm good at uh, if i put my mind to something if i put in the hours i will get it and that although that's correct that can be you know misconstrued into if i just keep trading for a long amount of time i'll become better at it so there's you know different ways to go about it um and the main thing i would say also is um everything that you've learned in it's a funny way to say it but everything you've learned in the corporate world you have to really just believe the opposite of that it's like the more hours you work does not mean more profits like you said at the yeah. start. um you know you're not getting paid for your time you're getting paid for the decisions that you make you are a risk taker you have to control your emotions and the way you conduct yourself in the markets and the moment you can just do those few things and at the end of the day just actually respect yourself and treat your trading like a business that's the best thing i can say treat your trading like a business and that's pretty much it once you can do those few things you are 100 percent on the path of success in this game and you will you know you'll be rewarded very very nicely in this game that's literally the benefit like we said you're putting in a few hundred dollars into the market you're getting tens of thousands back yeah. so don't worry if you actually follow your plans just even a little bit you'll get rewarded and you'll buy yourself so much time that you'll thank yourself a lot for so yeah that's really my sort of um advice for those traders amazing bro so many gems where can people find you so all my socials, everything is at Sniper Ads. Um, and I didn't get into why I said that, but oh, yeah. it's just a gaming name. So I, before I've used to play Call of Duty a lot, okay. I was in the middle of making my little um, gaming uh, you know, like uh, page. And I was into snipers and things like that. But when I found out you could be a sniper in the market, so I just thought, okay, might as well keep it. Yeah. So yeah, um, Sniper Ads, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, mainly active on my Instagram. But I will be putting out a lot of YouTube content now with live trades and breakdowns, Q and A's, and um, yeah, a lot of beneficial value on my socials there. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I'll link it all in the description below as well, so people can find you. But For sure. and hopefully we can run this back sometime, maybe in Dubai. Hundred percent. Yeah. No. Hundred percent, bro. I feel like we could go for another two hours. So yeah, yeah, we'll do a part two definitely. But thank you for coming down, bro. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you very much. Nice one.